How you guys? This is Beth. Welcome back to my channel. Um, so, before we get started, um, you might notice this very obvious. <laughs> um, it's not a burn. It's a, I guess you could call it a reaction to, um, I had to have a heart monitor. I had to wear it for a week. And um, so apparently I'm allergic to the glue that they use to keep the pad on because there's like four snaps and you have to like push this monitor onto the snap but there's a pad that they give you and they they gave me fresh ones for so that I could take it off and I could put it back on and um but apparently I guess I'm allergic to it or just I don't know really ate up at my skin but it it's, it is getting better but it was very itchy while I had the, the pad on and uh, it burns and I have like this, this spot right here skin actually came off with when I took the every time I would take the pad off to change it because you know to get in the shower uh, but the good news is I don't have AFib so yes yeah, so I heard from my cardiologist today and I don't have AFib so I guess it was worth all this here going on but and the skin's really raw and dry and hopefully it won't be too scarred up but anyway, so, but what I wanted to talk to you about today was I wanted to ask, um, when you're out somewhere and a random stranger comes up to you and asks you for money, do you, do you give it to them? Um, I do. Um, I know a lot of people don't, a lot of people donate money through organizations because they're afraid the person is going to use it for drugs or alcohol or whatever. Um, I do. I usually almost always do. Like if I have an extra dollar or if I have an extra five dollars or whatever and the person um, asks me for money, I do. And the reason why I do is because Jesus said um, to give give to all who ask. So, and whenever, um, or sometimes when I'm, I'm honestly, I guess maybe judging the person and, you know, in my head when, when I know I shouldn't do, um, that um, I'll say, well, this guy looks a little rough and tumble or this guy looks like an addict or he's probably not going to, and the Lord reminds me, that's not your business. It's not your business what he's going to do with your $5. It's my business what he's going to do with your $5. Your job is to be obedient. And his job is to use it for whatever he told you. Like if he told you he's hungry, he needs a sandwich, then he'll be judged on whether or not he bought that sandwich. You're going to be judged on whether or not you're obedient to me and did what I put on your heart to do. Okay, so that's why I always do. And um, I will, um, in the comment section, give you the, refer the reference to this because somebody who was well-meaning in my comments, I made a video on um, whether or not you'll be married in heaven, and somebody sent me a big, long paragraph as to why I was wrong. And in actuality, they corrected me and they were wrong. So I ended up in the comment section putting... Um, the reference, the Bible reference. And I wasn't going to do that because a lot of times in these kind of videos, you know, um, that can get, like, they'll say, turn to me to Revelations or turn with me to Matthew. And it's like, dude, I believe you, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't really feel like turning to, it's like, I don't know. It's just, it kind of personally, when I'm watching something like this, it kind of gets on my nerves. <laughs> You know, it really does, like, oh, I'm like, I'm not sure, or just, just, you're just talking to me about something, like, like, I'm not a pastor, I'm just a woman who's making a video for YouTube, you know, so I'm not trying to bore you, but then, like I say, too, don't take my word for it, like, you know, look it up for yourself, but he did say that, Jesus did say, give to, you know, and, and yes, we could expand on it and say, well, what he really meant by that was this, that, and the other but that's just what I do because I hear this little voice in my head saying, give to whoever asks of you. Um, but also, so, and there's a, a silly reason that I have is um, 
<clears throat> excuse me. Did you guys ever see um the movie called uh, Bruce Almighty? And uh and Bruce is given God's powers for like a whole week, but only in his own neighborhood, like not the whole world, just his own neighborhood. And um so Morgan Freeman plays God. And throughout the film, there's this homeless man. And then, um, at the end of the film, you find out that the homeless man this whole time was God himself and probably just testing people to see what they would do with him, to see what they would do for him. Because, um, you know, Jesus says, whatever you do for the least of these, you do unto me. And that's another reason, because how do we know? That this guy coming, you know, that coming up to me, he might look like a drunk or he might look like um, a drug addict or he might look like uh, just a random homeless guy. But how do we know that it's not um, God, God Almighty himself seeing what we'll do with for somebody who will randomly come up to us and, <clears throat> and ask us for a dollar. But also... Um, it's like, um, also the Bible says, um, about being careful how you talk to people or react with people because many have hosted angels unaware. And, um, now this part, I like to think, now I have never read this in the Bible, but I like to believe that a lot of times it is an angel and as soon as you do the very right thing, the thing that you, that God would have wanted you to do, the angel that was dressed up like a homeless man went and he reported back to the Lord and said, well, she passed the test, you know. But um, I don't know. So what, what do you do? What do, When somebody, and I'm not judging anybody, like if you don't ever give any money or if you say, no, what I, I like to do is I like to give to charities and... So let them disperse the funds how they say, see fit. Or, or heck no, they ain't getting none of my money. I work too hard for my money. I'm not going to judge any way that you, um, any way you handle it. I'm just curious as to what you do. Like how you feel about it, you know. Um, but, um, but it's, it's, you know, it is interesting. It's like I have my ways that I think about things. And um, but like I, I had a son who was a drug addict. And um, he always had a place to live. Um, but I really believe if he had in the past a way that he might have ended up on the streets. Begging for money just so he could eat. Maybe it was, it was getting... Towards the point where it was getting that bad. And his father and I didn't know what to do, how to handle it. Um, his father had gotten, like, to his wit's end about everything. And, you know, and you have to be, you have to be careful with a drug addict in your home when you have other children. And, you know, what do you do with that? And you don't want him out in the street. But, and... And one of the very last times he got high, his father found him on the bathroom floor. And he said to his father, the next time you find me like this, you leave me there. Because he was just so tired of it all. And after he passed away in his room, I found several, several um, keychains from N.A. And... Um, so he, he tried. He tried really, really hard. He just couldn't, he couldn't stop. And right before he overdosed, he was, he was clean. And, uh, he was clean and he had, he had just gotten a fresh haircut because he had a job interview and he's feeling really good about himself. And he did that thing a lot of them do where they underestimate the dosage. It's like, I'm just going to do this one last time and then I'm going to quit forever. Well, he quit forever because he died. And, um, and he was taken to the hospital and he was given the Narcan 
but then he came home AMA, which is against medical advice. And he came home and that was, and then he just, he just, he took more after that. And, um, but whenever I see men like him out in the streets, it just tugs on my heartstring. Like that could have been Robert. That could have been my boy, you know, out there. And, uh, this month is his birthday. It's October. And, uh, on the 22nd, he would have been 35 years old, but he died at 28. So he'll forever be 28 years old. But it's like, I, I don't know, whenever I see them, it just pulls on my heartstrings. And it's, it's like, that could have been Robert out in the street begging for money because he was hungry or begging for money for this or that, or I need a place to sleep tonight or whatever. And I don't know. But, yeah, so I guess Robert's part of the reason why I give money to people that just will randomly come up to me and say, do you have a dollar? Or do you have, you know, whatever, can you spare money? And, um, I guess, I don't know. But, yeah, so it's, it's like, do you, do you give money to strangers on the street? Do you give money to, you know, people that ask you or... Uh, do you say, oh, heck no, you know, I'm not, no, I work too hard for my money. If he wants money, he needs to go out and get a job. It's as simple as that. And so, no, I don't know. But, um, like, like, like I said, no judgment though. Like, however you handle it, that's, that's between you and God, how you handle, how you handle that situation. But, um, but. Here's the thing, like I like I told my husband, it's like um, we're responsible for what God puts on our our hearts. So if God puts it on your heart to give you to, to give somebody money, okay, then He expects us to be obedient, and we'll be judged <clears throat> by that. You know, we'll be judged uh, come 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 judgment day. You know, He's gonna look at His like I like to call His video recordings. You know. And, and he'll know whether we did or we didn't. But also, this guy over here that you gave the money to, it doesn't really matter what he does with it. What matters is that we were obedient. Now, he's going to be judged on, if he lied to me and he said, um, hey, you know, lady, can I have a couple dollars because I'm hungry and I want a sandwich. And I give him that money because he says he wants a sandwich, but then he takes it and turns around and he lies and he buys dope with it, then that's his judgment. That's what God's going to judge him on. Did you, did you really use that money, what you told the lady you were using the money for, or did you lie to her to put some more dope in your arm? Like, you know, so that's his judgment. My judgment is how, how I handled, he came up and asked me for the money. And like I said, you never, you never know. That could be, that could really be an angel in disguise. Or it could be God Almighty himself, you know, because I have worked with homeless people who they weren't on drugs or they weren't schizophrenic. They were just down on their luck. And so maybe it's somebody like that. You never know. But, but, um, yeah, so let me know in the comments, um, you know, how you handle it. What do you do? And, uh. And if y'all are, who's ever a praying person, praying folk over here, pray for this for me. Because <laughs> it itches, it hurts a little bit. But like I said, at least I, I, I can say I'm glad. I just heard from the, the doctor. He called me today. And I have no AF, AFib. And uh, he says, I don't even have like, like any chest pains that I'm feeling or not from my heart. But I do have GERD, so that's probably what it is. But, um... I have what's called uh, PAT rhythm, and I can't even tell you what the, if you're a medical person, you will know what that is, but he said it's very common um, for somebody my age. It's like I said, my son was going to be 35. <laughs> I have another son who's 38, so you can pretty much figure out how old I am. And, uh, oh, what, I don't look it? Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, 
So, yeah, so it's like when you get older, you know, my age or older, you your heart will do this. It's very normal. And he's thinking about starting me on a, um, a medication for it. So it'll take away the uncomfortableness. Like I'll get a flutter or whatever. It'll take it away. And, uh, you know, so, so, but then I also have to go see him tomorrow because I had a, a doctor's appointment anyway, which he didn't even know. He was like, I'm not, he's like, he was kind of starting to ramble and <laughs> talk to me more about it. I said, well, uh, actually I have an appointment with you tomorrow. He goes, oh, you do? I didn't even know that. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah we, I, he's like, okay, well, we can talk about this more tomorrow then. And, um, and I have to take back the monitor. Oh, oh my Lord, the monitor. I signed this paper, right? That if I were to ruin the monitor or lose the monitor, God forbid, that these things cost $1,700. And I was like, ooh, dip. So we won't be losing that monitor or breaking it or, you know. So I said to my husband, I'm like, well, when I go to the doctor's appointment and I take this monitor with me, I'm going to say to them, uh, you know that piece of paper that I signed saying that I have your monitor and it's worth $1,700? Yeah, I want that back. <laughs> so, but anyway, yeah, so, yeah, if you could, like, so I'm clean bill of health. But I just have this remnants right here, which is driving me crazy. But anyway, pray for me. And uh, I'll continue to pray for you all. And um, so have a blessed rest of your day. Bye-bye.